Hi, and welcome to Dr. Deborah's next episode of Dr. Deborah's Q&A on the Listen and Love channel. Um, this week is going to be an amazing week. We have another special guest, but before we get into that, I want to tell you how much I'm enjoying doing the show and how much I'm enjoying bringing all of this information to everybody. So keep your questions coming because there'll be more shows that are just for you. But for, before we begin, responses from last week, we did the sexual assault with Andrew Parry, and I got so many people talking to me about how they never thought about things the same way after we did that show because we talked about it from two different points of views i'm a trauma male trauma therapist and he works with females and looking at it with wow you know women go through this way in society when they report assault and men go through it this way in society and bringing those two together brought a very unique perspective so thank you Andrew and don't forget he'll be at the script conference this year talking more about his topic and more about some of the things that he's doing in the field so please go to the scriptconference.com and register so that you can save your seat well your seat on zoom <laughs> and see Andrew speak and you can send any questions to me right here on the YouTube channel. So just drop it below, or you can send it to me on Instagram. You can send it to me on Facebook and it's just Dr. Deborah Warner. So please do that. So I can make a special show just for you. And I won't say your name unless you want me to. With that said, the question that came from this week, which I thought was really amazing because I've been thinking a lot about how kids especially with all the stuff going on in, in Minneapolis, how people are being perceived, but also how kids are gonna grow up with trauma. So this is the question I got. How do you not transmit the trauma to the next generation? Wow, how powerful is that in the times that we are in? Because you're gonna transmit trauma, right? You're going to have anxiety. I have it now. I know I have a son who's African-American and I had to have the talk, the talk you know, about what happens if a police officer pulls you over or, or, you know, how you're perceived, you know, I mean, I'm even telling him don't wear a hoodie because I don't want you to be perceived in a certain way. These are conversations I'm having with my son because I'm concerned for his safety, but I'm not just concerned for his safety because he's African American. I'm concerned for his safety because of the climate that we're in, because of that we're not learning. We're not learning how to treat people. And so one of the things that I thought about is all of that training that I've had from you know um, my degrees and also just interacting with people and doing therapy and doing um, family therapy. And there's something called parenting styles. You have parents that are more authoritative, which is these parents have characterized by high demandedness, but huge responsiveness. Basically, they shape the child and they give them consequences, right? So if you leave your toys out, um, you know, the next day you can't play with them, but then they give you hugs and they tell you how much they love you and they build you up. And then you have the permissive parents. They're, they, they are low demandedness. They have, the kids do not have responsibility and they're highly responsive. So they build them up, but they have low demandedness. So the kids never learn rules and they never learn any structure. And then you have the authoritarian, which is the parent that's really hard. They're characterized by high demandedness and low responsiveness. You ever seen that guy on the sidelines and their kids playing a sport and they're just yelling at them because they didn't do it perfect. But then when they do do something good, they never say anything positive. That's what that is. And that creates a lot of abusive environments. And so when you have these parenting styles, sometimes parents react from their own childhood messages and their own childhood experiences. And they bring that to their children. And then they develop, these kids develop a traumatized pattern, but it's really coming from the, the parent's past, not the child's past. And with that said, I have brought in an expert who is a family dynamics expert to talk to you about family dynamics and parenting styles, but also talk to you about how not to repeat generational trauma with people. So I'm going to bring him in in the waiting room because he's waiting right there. And I am going to have him introduce himself. Hey, Thomas, how are you? Great, Dr. Gett. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. And, you know, I just introduced you, but I didn't give them all the background on how fabulous you are. So can you please introduce yourself for me? You got it. So my name is Thomas Gagliano. I'm a family dynamics expert, best-selling author. I have a master's degree in social work. Uh, and the name of my book is called The Problem Was Me. 
The Problem Was Me. Wow, that's a catchy title. Can you give me a little bit of background about that? Sure. Well, I, I grew up in a challenging childhood, like many of us have, and uh, I sabotaged a lot of my happiness early on. So uh, I got to the point when I finally figured out it's easy to fix myself than to fix the world. I got to that point where I moved away from the world of business and I had two goals. One goal was to help other people that came from the same negative childhood messages I came from. And the other goal was to give my children a safe place, a place to share their feelings, a place I really never had as a kid. But that was my two goals. And I started this about 20 years ago. Wow, that's a long journey. I think I've been in the field about 24 years. So yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. I'm dating myself, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Time flies. Yep. So I introduced a little bit about parenting styles, but we had a question that came in and that's why I contacted you. And sure. let me tell you what the question is. Yep. It, the question is, how do you not transmit the trauma to the next generation? Go ahead. Well, the first thing we have to know is what our trauma is. Look, there's three essentials. It's self-awareness, helps me understand the actions I need to take. And if I consistently maintain those actions, I really can be aware and change who I am. So my other book is called Don't Put Your Crap in Your Kid's Diaper. Why? Because the cleanup course is going to last a lifetime. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what's really important is to understand what expectations, what fears I'm putting in my child's diaper that I'm not aware of. And many times we have to seek other people to help bring out those blind spots. Because if we don't, those childhood messages are going to go down from generation to generation, and they're going to affect the intimacy we have or don't have, our parenting skills, even the careers we choose. They're very powerful. And those messages can be ingrained verbally and non-verbally. So we got to become aware of them. Okay. So I'm curious because you said you're a family dynamics expert. What does that mean? And how does that play in the role of working within a family? Like break that down for me. Well, I, I break it down from the child's perspective. You know, the child grows up and all children are egocentric. That means that um, they always see what their parents are doing to them as something they're doing wrong. A child that feels like they don't matter will not stop loving their parents they'll stop loving themselves. That's a very important piece. My dad's an alcoholic out drinking. I'm not saying, gee, he's got a drinking problem. I'm saying, what's the matter with me that he doesn't want to be with me more? So if you have parents that are working all the time or not paying attention to their children, not because they don't love them, but because they got finances and other things on their mind, the child doesn't stop and say, gee, my mom and dad are working hard so I can go to a good college or I can move and we can have a house. A child says, What's the matter with me that mom and dad are not paying attention to me, making me feel like I'm important in their life? So it's very important to understand the family dynamics that children see, not just what the father or mother do with them, but they also, they're little market researchers and they watch what the mom and dad do with each other. It's all implanted, it's all recorded in their head, and it's going to play out in their adult life. Yeah, I call my son my human tape recorder. <laughs> Yeah. Because he remembers everything I say and do, right? Absolutely. And so one of the things that I've heard you talk many times, because you do um, an Instagram live and you do that on Wednesdays and on Saturdays, which is an amazing thing. So everybody Thank should you. go check that out. It's called The Problem With Me. And um, one of the things you talk about is how you can overcome a traumatic childhood, right? How, do you, how can you do that? Like when you have all this stuff, what should be in your toolbox? How, how do you seek help? How do you move forward with that? Well, first of all, those of us that came from a tough childhood become fragmented. Okay, that means we split into two. We show the world one part of us, but there's an inside piece that has to be healed. That's the trauma piece. The problem is that we don't trust the healers in our lives because we time travel. We go back and we believe everybody's going to betray us or everybody's going to hurt us like our caregivers did in childhood. So it's really a tough thing because the solution is part of the problem. The problem is I can't trust people. The solution is I need to develop trust for those healers so they can bring out my blind spots and I could become congruent, be one person. So that's really the issue is trust. I lose trust early as a child, believing that people were not there for me. So I shut down and become fragmented. The solution is I have to learn to trust the healers sent to me in my adult life 
but I'm time traveling. Are they going to let me down and betray me the same way my caregivers did in childhood? So it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. So this fragmentation, that's like becoming two different things. Like define that for me. Fragmentation is I show the world one piece of myself, the mask I wear. I could be successful. I, who knows? And it doesn't make a difference when I'm showing people inside. I'm not going to let people get close to me because of the trauma, because of the distrust that I have that inside piece, I'm pushing people away. I'm sabotaging the happiness in my life, the intimacy in my life, because I'm really not showing them this in my world, ugly piece inside. Cause I'm, I feel in my world, I'm going to get rejected if I show them this piece. I'm going to get rejected like my higher powers rejected me in childhood. So I keep that planted safely inside. But I can't heal unless I bring that inside out and allow others to do for me what I can't do for myself. Wow. So in doing that, what do you think is something every kid wants to hear so that that doesn't happen? Every kid wants to know that their feelings are important to their parents. If their feelings are important, it means they're not important. So if my feelings are not validated and acknowledged by my parents, I feel like I'm not important. And we go back to that piece. I'm not going to stop loving them. I'm going to stop loving myself. And what I tell parents all the time is when you see your child struggle in whatever way you see them struggle, don't react. Take a second. Think about what would I have wanted to hear from my mom and dad at that age? Uh, quick story. Okay, um, my son was pitching in a baseball game and he was their starting star pitcher and he pitched terrible and lost the game. So I walked into the dugout after the game and I'm saying to myself, I'm going, what do I need to do to help him? Should I put on my therapist hat and just ask him how he's feeling or should I put on my baseball hat and work on his follow through, his pitching style? Well, when I got to the dugout, he turned to me in front of all of his friends and he looked at me and he said, dad, I need a hug. See, that's what he needed. He didn't need a therapist. He didn't need a pitching coach. He needed what I would have needed as a child when I was really in a bad place, a hug from his dad. And I, I realized at that time that there's plenty of time to fix him and tell him this and show him this and ask him feelings. He told me what he needed, which is what I would have wanted at that point in my life when I'm really hurting. So I tell parents, stop for a minute. We try to run in and fix. We try to run in and control. But sometimes when we stop and think about what we would have wanted, many times we just need that hug. So yeah. I try to let parents become aware of that. And, and that's more of a parenting style, right? It's you're not like being permissive. You're not being authoritarian. You're, you're having high warmth, right? Right? And you're, and you're having high responsiveness. And, and, but you're also, you're, you're giving boundaries to that kid. Yes. Right? And you're creating a safe place for your child so that they know they could come to you after that. So mm -hmm. he knows after that, he could come to me. It's great when our children come to us and ask us for help. Mm -hmm. Not that we become too permissive or where we become where we don't let them get out of their own messes. They have mm -hmm. to learn that failing is part of life. We all fail at times. So they have to learn to get out of their own messes. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we also know that they have a safe place to come to when they need us to come to our parents and tell us what's going on with them. That's what's going to enable them to, in their adult life, be intimate with their significant other and children, knowing that it's safe to share your feelings. Even if you disagree with the other person, that it's safe to share your feelings. And that's a very important environment to create with our children. And you, would you say that's the one thing parents can do to stop some of this cycle of trauma and re-traumatizing them for generations? Absolutely. But again, it begins with self-awareness. See, I have to know how I show up with my son, with my wife, with the other people in my life. So if I am aware of how I show up, of course, I have a better shot of not handing those blind spots to those people. And looking at our climate, all this craziness that's going on today, I mean, do you think that this would be relevant? Because before you came on, I was telling, talking about how I had to give my kid the talk about, you know, because this is probably going to traumatize him and how, how to behave in public and, and how you, you can't wear a hoodie and, and things like that because of who you are, right? And so how do we not bring that fear into our child's lives? Be curious. It's the word I use with parents. Talk 
to your children, not at them. Ask them how they're feeling about things. I'll give you another quick story. My son came to me, he was in eighth grade, and he said to me, hey, dad, I want to, I'm thinking about smoking weed. All my friends smoke weed. Now, I'm a recovering addict, Dev, and the first thing I wanted to do was say, get in your room until you're 26, and when you're 26, you can come back out again. But of course, I didn't do that. I was curious. I said, tell me what you know about weed. Let's go find out. We went on the computer. I said, you know, if you do something illegal, you choose to get in trouble with the police. I didn't create that. Your choices create the consequences. So if you do something illegal and you get caught, you chose to get in trouble with the police. So I gave him his consequences. If he makes that choice, yeah. we went on a computer. We learned about weed, how weed could, could be a gateway to other drugs, whatever. But I didn't tell him what to do. I wanted to tell him again, go in your room for 10 years and come back out when you got this weed out of your head. So he came back to me weeks later and he said, you know, dad, I don't hang out with those kids anymore. You see, Dr. Deb, he made that decision, not me. I could have controlled him and made it for him. But what we want with our children is we won't, don't want to make their decisions for them. We don't want them to do what we tell them to do. We would rather, rather they do what they want to do on their own, knowing that's the right move. Not doing it because our parents tell us to do it, but doing it because they know it's the right thing to do. And that's probably a way not to have them live in fear. So is there anything else you want to add to this um, and tell us how we can get a hold of you? Um, yeah, I just want to make it clear if there's one thing is to acknowledge and validate your child's fears. I said that earlier, mm -hmm. his, feeling, his feelings, her feelings, to constantly make it a safe place where they could keep coming to you with their feelings and you don't close them down. You want your child to talk to you about their feelings, not go to the wrong places and look to get those feelings um, validated by the wrong people. So create that safe place. So uh, you, you could listen to my podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts on the problem was me. I have many of them. They're about 20 minutes. Uh, my website is the problem was me.com. Um, and uh, yeah, you just have some fun there. I have some media reels on there. I have some digital products on there on parenting, on intimacy. Um, help yourself. Have some fun. And you're going to be at the annual script conference, August yes. uh, 3rd and 4th. I think we're presenting over both of those days. And you can always drop me a line on any of my social media to get a hold of Tommy. And again, it's The Problem Was Me, and he has two books out, and you get those on Amazon.com. And uh, I think you're a best selling author, also, right? Yep. The Problem right. Was Me. My wife totally agreed with the title of my book. She said, <laughs> I'm sure she did. Thank you All very right. much. I'm going to put you back in the waiting room and then I'll talk to you after I close out the show. You got it. Wow. What, how interesting is that from a completely different perspective and the relevancy of all of this today. And one of the things I want people to get is keep your kids close, you know, in all this climate and what's going on, keep them with you and explain things to them. Don't, don't just assume that they know. You heard uh, Thomas Gagliano talk about that and have them make their own choices, but they'll tell you how they're feeling. You're, you're raising this child is gonna be wondrous and curious in this world and answer their questions because the one thing is that you want them to feel heard so they do come to you and they do ask you questions and they do ask your advice on how to live their life because you've lived longer than them, right? So that is the one thing you can do. And the one thing I would say, if um, I was going to talk to my BFF and my BFF was coming to me and asking me a question about this, I would say to them, just respond in love. If you always come from a place of love inside, no matter how afraid you are and how traumatized you are, you're coming from love. You're doing the best you can. You're doing the very best you can. And that's where I go to. Because, you know, I mess up all the time with my son. And, and, I, and I try to be the best mom I can be. But I always know I'm coming from a place of love. And I'm coming from a place of wanting to help him be the best human being he can be. Because I think he is the most amazing person in this world. And I get the job of raising him. I am privileged to have the job of raising the most beautiful, smartest person in the entire world. So to sum it up, what did we talk today? Talk about today? We talked about different parenting styles. We talked about, you know, how to respond to your child. We talked about the climate of everything going on. We talked about um, 
how how to how to move about in today's world and how to have your child feel safe and what an amazing job tommy gagliano did and so please reach out to him but there's one key thing i want people to get is just to respect each other out there no matter what no matter what your viewpoints are let's just respect each other and let's let's think about let's think about one thing we are training the next generation. We are showing them how to respond. Do we want to create an angry generation? Or do you want to create a generation that problem solves, talks about their feelings, thinks about the feelings of others, and thinks about how can I improve this world for other people? And if we do that, we are all doing the very best that we can. So with that said, keep your questions coming and I will be sure to respond to them. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on my website, drdebrawarner.net. Um, you can also find me at the annual script conference, which is August 3rd and 4th, and it's going to be on Zoom. So please go to the scriptconference.com and reserve your place to be a part of this wonderful conference that will be happening. And all the speakers that I'm featuring right now will be at the script conference, and you can meet them and talk to them, and you can hear more about their amazing work. So with that said, please reach out to me, and please listen and love each other. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.